kelompok teroris Al-Shabaab menyerang militer Kenya di Somalia. Tentara Kenya yang berada di Somalia adalah bagian dari misi Uni Afrika mengurangi serangan teroris. Berikut liputan selengkapnya oleh Robin Creel. He was telling us, this is now my home. The photos he sent home told his family he was brave. But in his personal life, Corporal James Saitoti Kurunoi didn't like conflict. He was always jolly. He had a permanent smile. His job was to drive tanks out of the Al Ade base in southern Somalia. His pictures showed what he called his new home. And I don't know, even in the family, whoever will fill that gap. On January 15th, Kurunoi's camp was attacked by Al-Shabaab militants. His family didn't hear from him again. Kenya's Defense Force brought four caskets home with full military honors, but Kurunoi was not among them. The Somali government says there were an estimated 200 Kenyan soldiers at the base the day of the attack. But the Kenyan government has released no details of what happened, no official death toll. But four months after the attack, a picture is emerging of heavy losses as body after body is quietly released for burials across the country. Kenyan media has documented at least 30 funerals. The terror group Al-Shabaab posted this propaganda video showing the attack and the brutal way wounded and surrendering Kenyan soldiers were simply shot dead. Al-Shabaab claims more than 100 Kenyan soldiers were killed. At least 50 Kenyan casualties can be counted in the video. But the death toll may be even higher than that claimed by Al-Shabaab. Two officials familiar with the recovery operations have told CNN that the Kenyan death toll from that day is at least 141, making this attack the bloodiest defeat for the Kenyan military since independence. The Kenyan Defense Force would not respond to repeated CNN requests for comment. One blogger who posted photos and information about the Al Ade attack was arrested under a rarely enforced national security law, but was later released by the Kenyan government without charge. Although they cite national security reasons, in fact, what they end up doing is creating an opportunity for Shabab, in many cases, to propagandize their victories, perhaps exaggerate them. But there's no, there's no way of countering that narrative because there is no real narrative coming from the government. After seven DNA tests, James Saitoti Kurunoi was finally identified. A tree like this one will be planted near his gravesite. But James's sister still has many questions. We would like to know who are these people. They, dare, they died together or how many were they? It is a question it will live in our, in our mind forever. Because even if you, you got your body, what about the rest? How many were they? How many were they rescued? How many are they injured? You know, you don't know. For now, the story of the Kenyan soldiers who fought and bled that day is being told not by the country they died serving, but only by the families of the dead and the terrorist group they'd sworn to fight. Robin Creel, CNN, Narok, Kenya.